Hey guys, Arclight Tank here bringing you a game in super high definition. My resolution is a little bit low because we have been having problems on this computer with the encoding with the resolution because we were running it at the highest and somehow Fraps and Windows Movie Maker don't want to work with that. But I do have a big announcement. Starport 13 is no longer a server for StarCraft 1 gameplay. It is actually now a dedicated video site to commentaries where I will have one-parters of all upcoming videos up. So you can either go to starport13.com for that or Arclight tank.com and I will have this up as a one-parter so this game right here it is between mouse Morrow who uh, is part of the mouse team which I like those guys and uh, he's gonna be our blue Terran up in the top right and our bottom left is gonna be in a he's gonna be our red Terran and looks like two scouts or two proxy SCVs already out from Morrow and one out from Inna and Inna is building a barracks right outside of this uh, this vis vision obstruction so it looks like they're both gonna go for a proxy and it looks like right here Morrow is building two barracks so this could uh, this could be good for him or it could be bad because what we're gonna see here is we're gonna see Morrow does have a better production capability if the proxy runs a little bit longer because he can get two marines out as opposed to Inna's one but the thing is Inna does have an economic advantage so in the early proxy game he will be able to get out a few more marines and they could both do serious damage to each other's bases given that they're not protected by anything because the barracks the main defensive uh, defensive structure in the early game to get those marines out is not present in either base so uh, what we could see here is we could see one player maybe rushing back to his base but it looks like Morrow is going to be kind of slightly behind especially with the supply depot coming up a little bit behind in us and Inna going for a refinery earlier so Inna kind of planning a little bit for the late game a little bit more and it looks like Mara is going to send one of his SCVs into Inna's base and it looks like he's going to see this refinery and that could tell him that Inna is going maybe for a quick factory but the thing is he doesn't see this barrack so it, he does have reason for suspicion and it looks like Inna is going to try and push the attack with two marines and an SCV right now and two marines also out for Mara at the same time looks like they're heading in and it looks like a third marine on the way and uh, third and fourth for Mara so Morrow's base now under siege by Anna. He's trying to build a bunker, but it's not going to be in time. It looks like this base is just going to be absolutely destroyed if he can keep supplementing this proxy. But the same thing going on inside of Anna's base. Anna now floating his command center out with his SCVs being attacked. And it looks like he may try and just run for his Marines and run to his proxy. And we may be seeing something like a base trade here. Or whoever could establish this base first could win the game. But it looks like Morrow's base may be taken out by these Marines or it will be damaged. And if he can put this into the red, then it would put Morrow in a very, very, uh, very peculiar position because you will have to send SCVs out there to repair that. And if if Inna can cover this with Marine cover, it will be fairly safe from repair. And it looks like Inna's base is farther across the map, so he will be able to land that first. And that could be a pivotal, very pivotal um, economic lead early in the game. And it looks like he's sending his barracks up, floating it into the base. And we've got the two barracks from Morrow also floating into the base, but he's not going for a wall while Inna is going for a wall. And Maro, it looks like he does have this larger standing force. Let's take a look at units. And yes, Maro is two Marines and one SCV up. So if he uses this correctly, he may be able to pull off a win right now, but I doubt it. And uh, if this wall goes up, especially with this bunker to supplement, there's absolutely no way that Maro can pull off the early game win. And this is actually very amazing, these two players swapping bases completely. And it looks like Inna is already going to have his base pretty much prepped once his command center lands, and he can get that economy started up quite flu fluently. Maro does have one supply depot here, and it looks like he's going to destroy that. So I think both players are in the negative for supply, which it actually looks like Maro is in the positive, but it's going to go down with that, uh, that last... Plenty of and it looks like two workers going down now for Morrow, so Inna is going to have the advantages for workers at the moment by one. So that could be very bad for Morrow because Morrow is going to be landing this command center slightly later, and he does have his SCVs, especially out here pretty far, and he's got to bring all of them back before he can even get started with his economy. And three Marines now, one just working on the supply depot. But he does have three in this bunker, and that's more than enough to get started. And it looks like he's going to go for a refinery, so we could be seeing some early tech uh, upper mech build maybe and this base also being established so neither player is really really sure about where to go at this moment it seems like but it looks like Inna is going to go for a high tech build and try and push the attack on Morrow and Morrow does know about this second base but it looks like he may be just uh, trying to get his economy up to par at the moment and he also needs a supply depot before he can build anything while in Inna's base we do have positive supply and he is also calling in an orbital command right now which both players are but Inna is slightly ahead 
ahead. And he does have some Marines stationed around his base kind of as a scout precautionary measure. And neither of these bunk barracks actually producing. And it looks like a mule is already going to be down for Anna. And Morrow finally getting that supply depot up. So it looks like Morrow is, or Inna rather, is going to have an early advantage, especially with his supply. But he is one barracks down. That's something very important that we need to make sure we watch here. Uh, because if he can remain with only one barracks, unless he goes high-tech, which it looks like he will given this refinery. And he is putting down a factory now, which even though uh, at the moment Maro does have the production capability, the advantage there, he is limited by supply, and he does have only barracks, no refinery at the moment. So that could be very bad for him if he does not expand his economy to include gas so that he can keep up. And it looks like he's going to do that right now. So good timing on the refinery. He needs that if he wants to be able to get the uh, factories out and maybe detection which he does not have an engineering bay either so if there was a banshee build it could be devastating for him especially with cloaking but a siege tank build could also be uh, fairly devastating because uh, one of the best things to counter that is mech and those would just tear apart a biological army like this marine force we see here which, looking at units again, Morrow is still ahead in military forces, but workers, uh, there's a significant advantage to Inna right now, and Inna is doing very well so far, and it looks like he's going for that tech lab and the starport at the same time, so we may be able to see the old switcheroo here, or he may just be going for siege check and medevac support, uh, maybe for a drop or something like that. But it looks like th he moved these two barracks closer together. Not sure the reasoning behind that. But he is producing more units with them now. And he's supplementing his, his military force. So he's taking a pretty good advantage. And, you know, he doesn't have enough forces to push it right now, especially with the bunker. And projecting out into the future, what we're going to see is in a building uh, banshees, it looks like, because he's just floated this factory out. So he's going to land this star fort right here. So he's also got the Orbital Command continuing to produce SCVs, and it looks like Marine's moving out for now for Morrow, and he's not going to be able to do very much. And in and now sending his barracks out, likely as a scouting measure. So, uh, looks like he's also got a factory coming down now, which is l significantly later. And already has a starport out producing a Banshee. So, something good against Banshees. Uh, maybe Marines combined with Ravens, but he does need detection. That's absolutely vital. All he's got is the Orbital Command, and he's constantly using that to call down uh, things like mules or maybe even uh, supply depots. Uh, eventually, which it looks like this barracks is going to be spotted by these marines, and he needs to turn this around now to keep it out of the red, because if it goes into the red, he's got nothing to repair, so he's going to turn it around right now and head over to this vast chasm right here where he can't be targeted, but it looks like it's going to go into the red, and it is eventually going to burn down on its own, and look at this, uh, this zoning our watchtower right now, and right now the marine does have it for Morrow, and look, it's twinkling, the little fairy pole there. Okay, so he is chasing this barracks, and the barracks is not going to be able to do much. It's burning down very quickly, and there it goes, crashing into the ground. Little pieces everywhere. Blah, blah. All right, so now back in his base, he has swapped his factory up to this point uh, where his barracks once was, and he is building a tech lab, so he could be going for siege tech. That could be very vital in the late game, even if Morrow does. looks like he's going to do the same switcheroo. Which, even if he does go for something like uh, Banshees, it could be good, especially against a Marine Force. If he can provide himself with air cover, which is fairly simple at this point, especially when he does have a factory with a tech lab and a starport with a uh, tech lab, which those can also produce Vikings, even though it has a tech lab, and he could swap it for a reactor if he wanted. So he's kind of messed up that landing right there, and he had to set... Uh, step it back, which it's not that big in the grand scale of things because he is far behind already and um, not not too big of a faux pas there. And it looks like uh, in a continuing to produce more siege tanks coming out now, which actually that will be his first one. And here's something also very pivotal about him taking the advantage. He's going to have a command center here and he's going to have the forces to go out into his natural and protect that. And it looks like he's got these two Banshees out now, which looks like one of them is uncloaked at the moment. And he is attacking that Marine Force.